Hey guys, welcome back to Two Cents Beat. My name is Eddie, and I am back with more Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. Okay, so last episode, after some minor heart-wrenching uh, separation, Sarifi and the King, Leon, have kind of uh, re-emphasized, restated their feelings for each other of, like, like, the other person completes them. And so now more than ever, their bond is stronger. However, there are people within the king's court and throughout his kingdom that are not, that are still not pleased about Sarifi being his queen. Obviously. That's going to be remaining an issue for a long time. But at least now, Sarifi and Leon have like a stronger understanding of each other. And so hopefully we won't get anything as heart-wrenching as like last episode where it seemed like Leon had abandoned Sarifi for her own good. But really, you know, it was to heal her and he had promised to come back to her and stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for these next episodes. So how about we just jump on into it? See what happens. Let's go. Last episode, we did get um, one of, I think, the king's advisors, I think, or somebody in, like, some type of position of power saying that, like, they will never accept Sarifi and that, like, only their, their princess could be queen or whatever. So I think, I think this is where we're going to be getting into, like, more of the political intrigue sphere of this series that I'm, I've been hoping for, I've been waiting for. I'm a big fan of series that have like political intrigue as like a part of their plot. Not necessarily like the entire thing, but like at least a part of it. So oh, so like previous kings and queens? Oh, his dad was king. Okay. Yes, because you're going to be the one that breaks tradition. Oh my god! Poor thing! Oh. The feline princess? Well, she's pretty! Oh my god! Vivian. Oh. Of course, she's trying to be queen. <laughs> no. Uh, people just don't listen in this kingdom, do they? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty typical of this, these types of stories. You'll never listen. Oh my god. <laughs> exactly. You tell them. Clops? Oh. Oh, oh, princess. Oh, like a bunny? Well, at least they're all, like, polite. Mm. There's a lot of pressure on them, huh? Hmm, okay. Okay, okay. Maybe they won't be, like, typical bitchy... character bitchy queen? Wanna be queen? <laughs> We're so bad. Like, why are you yelling at her? Don't yell at her. Oh, sorry, Fee. Oh, dear. Oh! Oh my god, sir! <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Wait, do they sleep in the same room? Have they been sleeping in the same room? Yes. Excellent communication. Oh, don't tell me this is not Sarifi. <gasps> oh my god. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. Oh! She burst in? She's like. Uh, no. <laughs> Oh. You screwed up. You done fucked up. Oh. <laughs> She's back here again. Oh dear. Oh. 
Oh, the sixth princess. Wow, so she's being bullied. Oh. You're inspiring. Oh. Oh, she's scared of the king. It's not how I thought she would be. Forced. <laughs> oh, guess you're gonna have to stay here and be Sarifi's friend. Right? Oh. Mm. <laughs> Born, into... Born into your fate. Wow. Oh, the royal guard? What? Oh, <gasps> more characters? Your moon god? Cool. Okay. Oh. Oh, he accepts her. I wasn't sure what he was going to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. <laughs> uh, they fly? <laughs> oh. Interesting. That's cool. Oh, she hid away. Don't tell me that's like her older brother or something. <gasps> oh, she's got a crush on the captain! Ship. Instant ship. That's it. <laughs> no! Sorry. Oh my god. Uh, instant ship. Yep. Oh. Wow! Oh, wow, how gallant! <laughs> no! Belongs to its people. Oh my god, that sounds like a confession. <laughs> oh, he was only a guardsman. Okay, okay. Damn. What a man! No! Oh my goodness. I didn't think so. <gasps> the wedding bells? <laughs> Facts. Should not ignore how you feel. Mm -hmm. Also facts. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> the League of Maidens in Love! <laughs> in Love! Oh! <laughs> he looks so serious. Oh my god. She just walked up to him too, just like... Is he wearing gloves or does he not have fingers? Wow, oh, she's as tall. She's almost as tall as him. <gasps> she better not get drunk. Oh my god. I knew it. <laughs> oh, Vivian got to her? What is, what, some, something's like clinking. Oh. Oh. So it, it, she hurt her pride? Well, that's your fault. That sounds like a personal problem. <gasps> and that's a fault of society. Oh. How dare- Okay, that's that crossed the line. How dare you insult the king? Nope. Too far. Ooh, yeah, you tell him. You tell her. <laughs> You're unworthy. Oh. Oh my god. Damn, the cat's kind of strong. <laughs> oh, that's racist. Literally. Oh, you really fucked up now. <laughs> ah, too late for that. <laughs> no choice. Nobody forced you. I mean, okay. Maybe society forced you. But you accepted. You decided. You decided to do it. I thought it was for a 
Your moon god. Wait, is that it? That can't be it. That can't be it. You need to stop your your conniving. <gasps> That's not creepy at all. What are you still doing? Oh my god. Good. Sorry if you need some friends. To teach her the ways of Queendom. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was Mashal. <laughs> it's like a mandrick and a and a cream puff. Ah! <laughs> why did it scream? I mean, I know why, but oh my god, hearing it killed it. Oh damn! Oh, <laughs> there it is. A bell. <laughs> She, she hides under his tail. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was cute. So, political intrigue we did indeed get. Why did I sound like freaking Yoda? So, we did indeed get some political intrigue. So, um of course, the the different like territories from around the kingdom are not pleased with Sarifi, and so they have sent their princesses to try and woo the king. But of course, of course, the king is a loyal man, and he is set on Sarifi, only Sarifi being his queen. But I do appreciate the fact that the story did kind of um, sprinkle in some little aspects that kind of helped to sympathize with the princesses like like even if the princesses do have the ambition to try and become queen they are also being forced into this position like they have no choice because you know people in their respective territories are like go woo the king for your people and i feel like that could potentially come back later on or i would like that to come back later on as like another aspect of like the political side of this story especially now that Sarifi has a friend you know as who is a princess and is not aiming for the king at all like I really liked uh what was her Amit princess Amit I've already grown to really like her and best part of the episode was when was when the king was just like the only woman I want the only woman I desire is you Sarifi like oh my god <laughs> Calm down, Leon. Calm down. Goodness. <laughs> we had like two ships set sail this episode and it was great. Well, one ship like get a boost of air and the other one kind of like start taking off. So all in all, it was a really fun, great episode. Let's just jump on into the next one and see what's gonna happen. Let's go. For me, this was a really interesting episode. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. Check out the socials for more anime and manga content. Check out Patreon for early access and longer episode reactions. Don't forget to drink some water, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Bye! Of course there is! <laughs> what kind of question is that? Is she fighting? <laughs> He's a human princess. Oh, then you should be there. I think. I don't know, maybe. Oh, yeah. The chancellor, but not the king? Hmm. Seems sus. I see. Even if it means going too far. Great. Oh, really? Oh. Uh -oh. She has to have a child within a week. Oh, a week, a year. Okay. Ah. That's what he's doing. Oh. That. 
Oh, really? Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, okay, okay. That was a royal. Oh, holy beast, too. Oh, he's pissed. Oh, shoot. No wonder. That's bad. That's way bad. Oh. Oh, she's got to summon it and tame it? Oh, shoot. Ooh. Holy crap, these stakes are huge! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> um, that's right, you tell him. You tell him. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> Oh. No, the way he holds her head, like... <laughs> so cute. So of course, that means she is also gonna have to do it. Or choose to do it. Why does she sleep in the same bed? She sleeps on his tail and he sleeps like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I still think... I think he still thinks of, of her as like belonging to him. <gasps> she did it behind his back? I thought you should have at least talked to him. What happened to all the great communication last episode? We need that here. Oh god. Okay. Great. Okay, so now this is, this is not gonna be what she needs to do. I mean, I guess she already offered his life, her life once before. Oh, shoot. It's actually draining her. Uh oh. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. What did you expect? Oh yes, why did you? I'm sick of it. Oh. That's kind of harsh. Oh, it's another it's a new day. Okay. Oh no. Unless it's just like rejecting her. Oh, oh she got a little bit further. Nope. <laughs> She's not seeking aid. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh yeah, you tell her. Tell her. You're like, your life belongs to me now. Oh, yep. Because she seeks, because she places no value on her own life, he has to do it for her. Unfortunately, up until she can actually. <sighs> okay, dude, no need to be so smug. Shut up. Can we do it this time? Oh? Oh, it was like energy coming forth. Oh my God! Look at him being all devious. Oh, that's why I was rejecting her this entire time. It's gonna be this tiny, cute thing. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. It's like scratching its butt. <laughs> but she did it. You want to throw down? <laughs> Oh, it's hard to believe. Oh, he's a phoenix. Aren't phoenix supposed to be like red? Oh, don't tell me the holy beasts are like the four beasts of a uh, like Suzaku, Genbu, all that. <laughs> this bird. This bird. Scrawny and vulgar? <laughs> Dog breath? Damn. Oh! Oh, so that doesn't make anything easier. 
course, finding fault in every little thing. The more regal form. Oh my goodness. Anubis. Anubis is like the. Oh. <laughs> Anubis is like the, the evil uh, mother in law or something. Like Jinx. Oh. oh. Really? Oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> I love how much of like a, a Yakuza he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of look like a birdie. A little baby bird. Oh! oh, he really did use up all his power? <gasps> oh, they're not some, like, type of, like, eternal being. Damn. I mean, they are eternal, but, like, there's a limit to them. That's interesting. I still appreciate you. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is it because people lost faith in it? As it lost its magical abilities, that's why? The fuck? There's an assassination <gasps> Only half a year? Bruh. And tell me it has to die to be reborn. Oh my god. This theme of like being needed or not needed or sacrificed or like. Oh, it's everywhere in the series. Which makes sense. I'm not complaining. Oh! Oh my god, it's gonna get skewered. Oh, it's flying! Oh! Oh! Oh, shit. Did she know he can't die? Oh. There we go. <laughs> oh, cute! Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. She believed in him. Oh! Get off! Just chucked her? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the king is there. Okay. That's fine. It's being a little matchmaker. Oh, That was cute. Alright, fine. That was cute. <laughs> okay, I do have to say, first things first, not gonna lie, I wasn't sure about this episode. Like, I, I, I wasn't feeling the whole, like, Sari not communicating with the king. And I definitely was not feeling how Anubis was being all, like, devious and, like, trying to basically get rid of Sadi and all that stuff. But I really wasn't sure about, like, Sadi not communicating. Like, ha this, not really a miscommunication, but just, like, this lack of communication between Sadi and uh, Leo this episode. Like, they had really great communication last episode, especially towards the end. I was kind of under the impression that that would kind of, like, continue w throughout the rest of the story. And so in this episode, when Sadi went like kind of behind Leo's back to like sign this agreement to bring this holy beast or whatever, all that, I was kind of like, ooh, Sadi, why? Why, Leo? Y'all had like this great moment where like Leo confessed and like professed his love to you, not his love, his desire for you and your life and everything. And it's like, and yet you go behind his back and agree to something that could end your life. It's like, mm. but it all came full circle when it turns out that like, you know, with the, the key to Sadi being able to uh, accomplish this task was like being believed in by Leo, right? So I will accept the lack of communication for that like boost of confidence that Sadi Fee received this episode along with this flying chicken. <laughs> all in all, I did end up enjoying this episode. I wasn't sure at first, but I did end up enjoying it and I liked like the the development that happened within this episode. Because now Anubis shouldn't be able to say shit about Sadi Fee. She accomplished the task that you set for her, so shush. I hope at least. 
So let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video. Check out the socials for more anime and manga content. Don't forget to drink some water, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Bye!